Hello, welcome back. All right, today we're talking about graphs, data tables. Um, I am not going to talk you through these slides. You can read, but I am gonna trust that you are gonna read them, especially once it's time for you to start making your graphs. You're gonna need to come back to these slides and look and make sure, A, check this one, make sure you've got everything you need. B, use these links. So these videos have been unblocked, so you should be able to watch them. If you do not know how to make a bar graph, you need to watch that video first. If you do not know how to make a line graph, you need to watch that video first before you make your line graph. And here's everything that all of your graphs need. So make sure that you go back and use that. Um, we're not gonna, you don't have to make a pie graph. So we're not, I'm not gonna be showing you how to do that one today. But if you want to do it for extra credit, there's a video to watch to do it. All right, so um, I'm not going to go over the examples because, again, you can read. So here we are. Scenario one, we've got a, a zoologist who has given the chimps food, and he's making a graph of type of food, how much eaten, type of food, how much eaten, type of food, how much eaten. So what kind of graph is that going to be? That's right, a bar graph. You may make these on paper. You can copy what I am creating on the slides onto a piece of paper, staple them all together. Don't even bother stapling them together. Just make sure your name is on all of them. Put your name and my name on all of them and bring them to school or take pictures and upload the pictures to your slideshow. Slideshow, doesn't matter to me, but I've got to have five graphs for this lab to be complete. All right. so. If you're doing it in slides, this is how to do it. If you're doing it by doing paper, you can ignore all of my directions for how to do it in slides, and you can just copy the table that I make. Got it? Just on paper, copy it down. All right, here we go. So you're going to click on the slide that you're trying to work on. So that would be this one. And then you're going to do slide, new slide. And that's going to give us a blank slide. All right, we're going to call this Chimp Chomps. You have to have a title for every uh, every graph on every table. We're going to delete that text box. If you can't figure out a way to delete it, it's okay. You don't have to. Now, I'm going to go fast here because this is a video, and you can pause it. You can rewind it. You can rewatch it. So I'm going to go fast because you can do those things. I don't need to slow down because you can slow it down. So we're going to do insert table and then we're going to do five by two because we've got four types of food and then we need the heading and we've, we've got the answers for each so we've got type of food and we have amount eaten and that's measured in grams so we're going to put that g in parentheses for grams types of food when we go back to the slide were bananas watermelon lettuce and celery so that's what we're going to put as our types of food. Bananas, watermelon, lettuce, celery. And then amount eaten is again in the reading. So there's all the numbers, 350, 250. Okay, so bananas was 350. Watermelon was 250. Lettuce is 100. Celery, 200. Data okay, table, done. Now we need to make the graph. So again, you're going to click on the slide we're actually on over here and then do slide, new slide. It's still being called Chimp Chomps because that's still the title we're working with. I'm going to click on that text box and hit backspace to delete it. Or you don't have to. You can leave it in there. It doesn't hurt anything. We need to put in our x-axis and our y-axis. So to do that, we need the line, this thing right here. So you're going to click on line and then you're going to drag down a line and make sure you're leaving space both underneath it and beside it. Once you let go, you're going to click one more time to make it permanent. All right, we need another line for the x-axis. So we're going to click down here and then drag it over and again click one more time to make it permanent. Now we need our text boxes because we're going to label everything. So our x-axis was food type and then we need to actually put in our food types. So we had bananas, watermelon, lettuce, and celery. Okay. 
then we need to put in our numbers. So we have 100, 200, so we need to go up to 400. So we're gonna put in a text box on the Y axis over here on the side. We're gonna do 400, enter, enter, enter. Ooh, that's not quite wide enough. This is silly. Okay, 400. Enter, enter, enter. 300. Enter, enter, enter. 200. Enter, enter, enter. 100. Enter, enter, enter. Zero. All right. We want zero to be as close to that bottom line as possible. Okay, now we're going to do a text box. Again, we need to label the Y axis, but we got to type it in first. So that's amount eaten in grams. And then we need it to be sideways. So you're going to click on this blue circle and spin it around sideways. And then put it where it needs to go to label. Okay, beautiful. Now we need to actually put in the data from the data table. So we've got bananas 350, watermelon 250, lettuce 100, celery 200. So we're gonna put in our bars to show each of those. How do I know it's bars? Because we already decided that it was a bar graph. So we're gonna do insert, shape, shapes, and pick the rectangle. And bananas was 350, so that's right here between 400 and 300, so bananas. Now we need to do watermelon. So insert shape, shapes, rectangle. Watermelon was 250. So about there, 250. Insert shape, shapes, rectangle. Lettuce was 100. So 100. Insert shape, shapes, Rectangle celery was 200, 200. Now those are boring and gray and we don't like that. So we're gonna click on the shape and then go up to the paint bucket where it says fill color and choose a color that we like to go into each one. All right, that's it. We've got a title. We've got the X axis labeled and then each of the groups labeled. We've got the Y axis labeled and we've got our numbers. We have our X axis and Y axis and we've got all of our data graphed. That one's done. For scenario two, a meteorologist was tracking the amount of rainfall throughout the day. So that means it's over time. So that means it's gonna be a line graph. He only collected this data once in one city so that means it's a single line graph. So it's just a basic line graph. Now the first thing you're gonna to need to do is create a data table and it's gonna look exactly like this one. So you'll do insert table and then it's gonna be five by two and then you'll put in the information, time of day, rainfall in centimeters and then fill in the chart. And it's gonna look like this. So one, two, three, four, five by two. So same chart, five by two, time of day, amount of rain in centimeters, times of day, amounts of rain. All right, copy that over. Now you gotta make your graph. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So you're gonna, um, well, as you know, you needed to click on this and then do slide and new to get the new slide for this rainy day slide, right? Right, okay. So now we've got our table made. Now we're gonna make our graph. So we're going to do slide, a new slide. We called it rainy day. Oh, you know what, though? Oops. Let me give you a little hint here. You could do it that way. You could. You could. But we've already made a graph. Let's just copy. So we're going to duplicate it. We're going to right click on it and duplicate slide. Okay. And then we're going to drag that down here where we want it. Now it's not going to be chimp chomps anymore. It's going to be rainy day, rainy day. And this time 
we've got time of day along the bottom. So this needs to be time of day. And then our time of day was 8 a.m. Ten a.m. Twelve noon. Two p.m. Then we know we don't need these, so we're just going to delete them because it's a line graph, not a bar graph. Anyway, um, our y-axis is amount of rain in centimeters, so we're going to click on this and change this to amount of rain. And instead of G, we're going to have CM. And our numbers go from 0 to 15. So 0, 0 to 15. So let's do 20, 15, 10, 5, 0. And we'll put a little more space in between them. There we go. That's lovely. Okay, so now all of that is now adapted. You see how we took, we didn't have to do all, all of the work that we did last time by just adapting it. So you can do that for the rest of them. Duplicate the slide, bring it down to where it needs to be, and then edit it or start from scratch. It's up to you. Okay, so um, for the rainy day, this is our, what kind of graph does it say? Line graph. So that means we need to plot points, and then draw lines to connect those points. So um, according to our chart at 8 a.m., it was five centimeters. So we need to insert shape, shapes, we need a circle. And so five centimeters at 8 a.m. So make a little circle. And then we're going to fill that in with, let's make it blue because it's rainy. Then 10 a.m. was 12 centimeters. So insert, shape, circle, and 10 a.m. was 12. So 10, 11, 12 is going to be almost halfway, but not quite, between 10 and 15. Make a little circle. Fill it in with blue or whatever color you want to use. Uh, 12 noon was 14. So insert. Shape, shapes, circle, 12 noon, 14's right there under 15. And make it blue. And then 13 was the last one. So insert, shape, circle, a little bit under. And make it blue. Already is. Okay. Sweet. All right, so now we're going to take a line and connect this one to this one. And then again, this one to this one. And this one to this one. Okay, that's it. That graph is now done. I have a title. My x-axis is labeled, and I've got my groups labeled, my y-axis is labeled, my numbers, and I've got my plots pointed and my line drawn. That second one is done. Scenario three is a shopping mall testing floor wax, and we've got three sections of the mall where the floor wax is being tested, and we've got three types of wax. So that means that we're going to have section, type of wax, type of wax, type of wax, Number of scratches, number of scratches, number of scratches. Section, type of wax, type of wax. So that's going to be a right bar graph, but we need three. Right, so it's a triple bar graph. Okay, so that means we need to make a triple bar graph, and that means we've got to make a table for our triple bar graph. This is the last item that I am going to click through showing you exactly how to do it. Everything else, I'm just going to give you the answers. I've already made them and we're just going to scroll through them. So if you need reminders of how to do this stuff, you're going to need to rewind and go back and get reminders of where all the clicking happens and what things you need to click on. 
Okay, so we're clicking on scenario three, slide and new slide so that we can put in our new slide down here. And then we're making our data table. We're gonna call it wax on, wax off. Okay, so we need to insert our data table. So insert table, and this is gonna be a 10 by three. 10 by three, you're gonna put area one in the first box or in the second box on the first row and then skip two and then area two and then skip two and then area three. Now you're gonna highlight area one, wanna highlight, but uh, yeah, highlight with the mouse. And then also the two boxes after it. So you have all three of those boxes highlighted in blue. Format, table, merge cells. And then do that again. Highlight area two and the two boxes after it. Format, table, merge cells. Highlight area three and the two boxes after it. Format, table, merge cells. Now, our types of wax are tough stuff, steel seal, and then we have a control, whatever the wax is that they've been using. So we're gonna put TS for tough stuff, SS for steel seal, C for control. And you're gonna do that in all three areas because each of them were tested in all three areas. Tough stuff, steel seal, control. Tough stuff, steel seal, control. And the data that we're counting here is the number of scratches. So that's gonna be the thing that we're counting uh, to put into the data table. So now you've gotta go back and read. In the first test section, tough stuff 25, steel seal 13, control 50. So 25, 13, 50. And second one, tough stuff 10, steel seal 22, control 45. So 10, 22, 45. 10, 22, 45. And then the last one, 3, 10, 35. 3, 10, 35. Data table name. Now, again, I said that's the last thing that I am showing you how to make it. Everything else, I've already made it. I'm just gonna put it up on the screen for a minute and you need to pause if you need to look at it long enough to actually make it. If you need reminders on how to make it in slides, you're gonna need to rewind the video and go back and, and see how I did it. If you have questions, comments, concerns, please email me. But if nothing else, just literally copy this onto a piece of paper and get all of them done and you'll be all set. All right, so that's the data table. Here's the graph. We've got type of floor wax as our x-axis, area one, area two, area three, tough stuff, steel seal control under each area, and then numbers on the side, number of scratches, and then we put in our data and we've got triple bar. We've got three bars for each area. All right, the next one. Um, Scenario four, we're counting leaves and, and we're playing we're playing music and counting leaves. So I'm gonna play music and then count the number of leaves. Type of music, number of leaves. Type of music, number of leaves. So that would be a, right, a bar graph. So you're gonna type in bar graph. Then you need to make your data table. And there's your data table. Type of music is your X, number of leaves is your Y. And then there's your, uh, your actual graph. So needs a title. You need to label your X axis and then each of your groups, label your Y axis and put numbers and then put in your information. Okay. Next one, peanut farmers testing fertilizer. He's measuring how tall the plants are and it's over time. Week one, he measures, week two, he measures, week three, he measures. The other thing is he's got fertilized plants and unfertilized plants. So it's gonna be a line graph because it's over time, but it's gonna be a double line graph because it's got the fertilized and the unfertilized. We have two pieces. So there's your data table. So peanut plant height is what you're measuring. 
We've got fertilize. Oh, I didn't spell that right. Let me fix that. You've got fertilized and unfertilized. Fertilized. There we go. Fertilized and unfertilized, week one, week two, week three. And then we put in our numbers from the, from the table. Here's our graph. We've got our title, got right, the label on our x-axis, week one, week two, week three. We've got our label on our y-axis, numbers on the side, We've got our data points plotted, drew our lines. Okay. Last one, this should be pretty easy to figure out what kind of graph it is because I told you that you weren't going to have to make this one. Um, this is when we have a whole uh, population of something and we're wanting to look at, at what's going on there. So this is going to be a pie graph or a pie chart. And I did go ahead and make this one so you can see what it looked like, even though you don't have to make it. So here is what your data table would look like. You got your number of animals. Uh, type of animal over here, number of animals over here, type of animal here, number of animals here, and that's it. Very simple little data table. And then you have to add all of that up to get what your total number of animals is, and then divide 43 divided by that number, get a percentage. 12 divided by that number, get a percentage. And then those percentages are what get, um, oops, are what get put onto your, onto your thing here. So, um, just, this is difficult to do. This is why you don't, you don't have to do it, but if you want to try to figure it out, there it is. All right. You're all done, right? Of course. So you're going to, uh, share this with me. So up in, uh, first of all, make sure you've changed copy of your name. If you haven't done that yet, then right here, you're going to click that orange share button and put in this address, harris.kate at notawayschools.org in the box and then hit send. Uh, of course, you may make them on paper, but if you do make them on paper, you still have to share this with me because I still need this part. I still need the part where you're identifying what kind of graph to use. Um, that's that's part of the, of the experience. If you're gonna make them on paper, that's fine. Just make sure your name and my name are on it and you either turn them in or take pictures. All right, that's it. Whew, we did it. Have a lovely day. Make good decisions. Have a good weekend. Bye.